Now, as we do get into the O's, this is presented by FedEx. Talking about a little bit of the nuances of the field, Santana. Um, look, we're going through a different head coaching change. You go from Jay Gruden to Ron Rivera. With that comes a different verbiage, comes yeah. different play calling, comes a different system. How hard is it to adjust from one offensive system to the next? It could be tough, you know, especially for, for a young guy to, you know, pick up things uh, quickly. But one of the things I found uh, that made, that eased things for me when it came time, because I've been through a lot of those changes, uh, I just found out to make sure that I knew my job first. You know, I wanted to make sure wherever I was playing at, if I was going to be, uh, you know, that primarily X receiver, then I'm going to know everything that I have to do. And then slowly I would gravitate to the next guy and to the next guy. And then before you know it, by the time that, you know, the season kicked off, I knew, you know, multiple positions and just making sure that I knew what everybody was doing so I can efficient, you know, be efficient with my plays. So Scott Turner takes over as offensive coordinator. Everybody's quite familiar with his father, Norv Turner, and the system that they put in is pretty high flying. It's fast. It's up tempo. Um, it's a lot of playmakers out there at one time. Dwayne Haskins Jr. was addressing the media just before we came up here, and he was asked about kind of learning that system. He says it's a number system, so it's kind of easier to digest for him. Yeah, I love the number system. When you just spoke on that and told me it was a number system, that was what I. That's how I learned the game in high school, college, and my first couple of years as a pro. When you can just hear your number, regardless of what they say in the other verbiage of colors and different things, you know that, all right, that eliminates me. I know the number, right? and I know this particular number tells me to line up on this side or this side or, you know, or the, or the guy who got the first numbers on the left side or the right side, vice versa. That slowed things down when it came to just, you know, because uh, when it, when it, you don't want to be thinking, but it also sped up things when it came to the learning curve. You don't have to sit there and be worrying about, you know, Zach's telling me to be on the left or, you know, Liz telling me to be on the right. The number system just break things down a little easier and have those guys playing at a fast pace. Now, when it comes to kind of audibles or, or different adjustments you have to make in the game, typically in a normal season, and we'll just see how this is going to play out there, um, you know, you have the 12th band, you have the no. fans. How hard is it to kind of hear those audibles when, when they're being changed at the time? Well, it depends on where you're going. Um, if you're playing in a stadium that's going to be loud, you're going to plan that week that we're going to, have crowd noise, we're going to find ways to have new signals, or in a huddle, we're going to make sure that I give you, uh, you know, a signal for if I'm changing, you know, at the line of scrimmage, vice versa, whatever it may be. But you will prepare yourself during, during that week knowing that, hey, I'm going to play in Seattle. It's the 12th man. They're going to be loud. And I think, you know, some, some games, it just, it, it, it doesn't even matter. You know, you see that quarterback eyes, you know something is a little different. You better be ready for it. Well, this season we'll see if there is fans to be able to interfere with that. You should be able to hear things out there. Um, you know, gosh, that would be disheartening if you can't have anybody. But yeah. it, it's just an unusual time. Um, so you have signals you can do. And you were talking about how you would be able to signal Trent Williams and tell him what was coming, what was that, and the different ways that you can do that. What about ways can you, like, cheat the system a little bit? Like, where you're looking? Can you cheat with your footwork? Can you try and cheat, like, to try and shake a defender off somehow, some way of where you're going to what you're actually playing? Well, you know, I've always heard guys on the D-line say they watched offensive linemen hands. You know, if a guy has his hand all the way into the grass on the ground they know it's going to be heavy they're going to run if a guy has his hands up oh man he's getting back he's going to pass protect same thing as a receiver db you know as a receiver i will always look off to where i was going and depending on that db if he's smart enough and if he's picking up on that then i was look to where i was going they're changing up to him to show him something that he might think i'm doing opposite so it varies, you know, uh, one of the things that you get, you know, we spoke with Chad Johnson earlier, he was a guy telling, telling you, orchestrating his routes before it got there, I'm running the curve, I'm going to beat you, you know, I'm running the slant, you know, I found Would it. Would he actually follow that? Um, who, him? Yeah. Oh, yes, he would do it every time. So he's what I'll tell you. <laughs> he, All right. It's, look, trust me, it's documented, go out there and watch it, this guy would tell guys where he was going, but Chad was just that kind of character, you know, uh, me, myself, Every now and then, if you got a guy who just want to be that guy, you, you might tell him a thing or two. But at the end of the day, you got to go out there and make the play. So I'm not trying to lead you to where I'm trying to make my play at or lead you to, you know, defending, you know, something that I'm trying to do. But I found it, you know, interesting just knowing it was certain guys would just have different kind of techniques that use. Me, myself, uh, when I want to cheat or, or have something that I can use against a guy, especially if I'm doing a guy up, you know, I'll find out about his mom, his dad, his girlfriend, and I might mention their name you know, on my way back to the huddle to see how they're doing, because now you got a guy thinking, and psychologically... Like how do you know her? <laughs> <laughs> that's not a good feeling to ask, be asked about your girlfriend in the middle of a game. 
<laughs> Probably not. No, uh, like Santana for not trash talking. You just you just go straight for it though when you do decide to use your words out there. You know, I was talking with Sean Springs about this and kind of like you know could he be fooled by that? And he said, well, that's kind of one of the reasons why guys would get fooled is they're watching your eyes. Yeah. He goes, I'm watching the hips. Yeah. He goes, the hips were always going to tell you which way they would run, and that's what you should be focused on. So, But the guys that would be following which way you're looking were probably the ones that yeah, should be able to run right by. Sean was one of those smart ones, and then just, just I remember him telling me that too also. He'd be like, Tanner, you're always showing me something else at the top of my, you know, you know I thought you was going to do this because your hips told me this, and I'm like, I know that's what you're reading. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you get guys that's playing chess with other guys because that's the way you beat guys. You know, you have to know what he's good at. And Sean told me from day one, I'm watching guys' hips, so now I know every time I'm running that route against Sean, I got to show him a stem or two different than what he's expecting to get to the route that I'm trying to do. So you talk also about Chad Ochocinco, another player uh, for the Washington football team that was always talking Fred Smith. Oh, my God. I mean, <laughs> ah. does it really work when I'm, guys just look, talk nonstop? I tip my head. One of the reasons why I like Fred Smoot, you know, as much as I do is because of just hearing this guy talk. I mean, honestly, me and Fred Smoot was, um, we was uh, Playboy All-Americans, so we made each other throughout our college, you know, experience getting ready to get drafted and stuff. We was play ball Americans and we got a chance to go to Arizona and take a picture. And right then and there, I came home with so many stories about this guy named Fred Smoot. Talk so much trash. Fast forward to, you know, we about to get ready to get drafted. Fred comes down to Miami and I guess he just felt like we had that friendship, we had that bond that he's going to get my number from someone and call me. This dude calls me and tells me, hey, I'm at Kara City right now. I'll lock you up. I'm in the 50-yard line. Come out here. <laughs> And it, I hung up the phone, man. I found out, found out who gave him my number and cussed that dude out. But <laughs> later, I ended up being teammates with the guy, and he just talked. He didn't care. I mean, Fred was a guy. He's the perfect, you know, example of the defensive guy. Did you see that it about. worked at times for him, though? Always, yeah. Yeah. always. Like, I would beat Fred, or, you know, that's one thing about playing DB. You're going to get beat. Mm. He didn't care. Break it again. Come on. I want some more. Like, that's the type <laughs> of guy he is. And. You know, I love playing with a guy like that because he didn't care. It was always on to the next play, and he made more plays than he did, you know, than he didn't make. And that's one of the things you found, you know, uh, very great of a guy like that, that he can put things behind him quickly and go out there and move on. It's a pretty good impersonation of him, by the way. <laughs> when I first got here, they go, you have to say it smoot smack and say it ten times fast. Then he had smoot smoot. Smoot Smack Snacks, too. Something like that. Scooby Snacks. I don't know. It was just too much. Apparently, I can't Great do it team. now. I wasn't able to do it then either. Uh, when you do get to the line as a receiver, do, can you tell by looking at the defense, like, when you know you're going to be able to get open? You know, most of the receivers, like, I was always asked by quarterbacks, especially the great ones. You know, that I consider great, Mark Brunels, the uh, Benny Testaverdes, all those guys would say, Tanner, how you looking? And the receiver would say, I'm open. Nine, nine out of ten times, you know, I'm open. And that's one of the reasons why we beat Jacksonville in 06. I told, told um, um, Mark that I was open on a play in the first quarter. He came back in the fourth quarter, or in, he came back in overtime when I wasn't open, and I still made the play. So things like that varies. But uh, as a receiver, regardless of what coverage that you see, you trying to get open. Your first thought is, I'm going to get open. And, and whatever happens, happens. The quarterback should see it and go to someone else. What about when it comes to a player? Because... Santana openly admitted that early on in his career he did not watch film. Yeah. So maybe a player they don't have it, but after playing against them, you're like, okay, mad respect for that guy. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, I had a good friend that I could talk football with every day, you know, and, and, and we, everywhere I went, he was there, you know, and uh, he's up here in Virginia now because of me. You know, he followed me, and, and now he's working in the area. But we will always talk football, and he's a defensive back. That's why we became so close because I had, you know, I had that kind of mindset too to be a defensive back, but I played offense. And he would get me ready for the, my opponents by telling me, oh, this guy's good, that guy good. Sometime I went in and out. Uh, I remember in 07, I believe, we was getting ready to play the Jets, and Revis was a, a rookie. And he told me previously about this kid from Pittsburgh that's pretty good. I go out there and play Revis. I have a pretty decent game. We won. Uh, and I come back, I say, man, this guy made me work for my money today. He's a young guy. And he said, I guarantee it was Revis. And I'm like, yeah. And I, we broke him down, and he told me, he said, that's the guy I was telling you about. Trust me, it was so great. I mean, I, I, I love to sit on my couch and just hear folks, mm -hmm. you know, rant and rave about Revis Island because I had a chance to see it early in his career and I knew he was going to be that guy. So you definitely gain respect from guys once you go out there and play them. And regardless if you have a good outing or not, if those guys showed you a thing or two, you're going to definitely come back and talk about it.